the price of oil decreased substantially in 2020. By April 2020, the price dropped by 80%, down to a low of about $5 due to COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Saudi Arabia oil price war. Although it's now resurging, some people have lost their jobs while others are working from home. How does this affect petroleum pricing? Are we using more or less energy? What is price deregulation? Welcome to Energy Quest. My name is Leslie Atha Esedu. Gone are the days we join long queues to buy petroleum products. Today, all the different fuels are widely and readily available, whether you want to fill a car or even a thermal plant. Gone are the days of full price subsidy. Now, price is deregulated. We choose which marketer to buy from because prices differ. Delving deeper into the matter, we'll go to Petroleum Solutions, the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors, Seaboard, and Hollard. Since we began price deregulation in 2015, it has brought quite a number of, you know, uh, uh, benefits and challenges. And um, in looking at this, you would have to look at the various key stakeholders in the sector. And, and I would like to start with, uh, as an operator, the consumer is my key stakeholder. It has led to product availability. So you see that by deregulating, meaning by government saying that private sector, do whatever you can to bring the product to the market and sell it at the price, you know, at which you are getting it so that there can be consistent supply of petroleum products on the market. It has led to intense competition. And this competition means that uh, operators are coming out with product offerings and even pricing competitively. You know, some are coming out with, you know, enticing offers. And when these things happen in a very competitive world, the consumer becomes the winner because he has the option to choose. But of course, price is not the only factor. And it's important that when we talk about this, sometimes the consumer you know, focuses on price. On the side of government, as we speak now, petroleum products taxes constitute significant revenue for government. Hitherto, what was happening was that, yes, government will raise this revenue, but turn around and then use it as subsidies. And so the net effect wasn't that you know, uh, great in terms of government revenue. So deregulation has enhanced government revenue collection. From the standpoint of government, this has been a great relief. Now for us as operators, this, the, 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 the point about product avail availability is also key to us because we as private sector operators, we take on that task of securing the, the funding from the banks to bring the products in tow. So we're able to plan and ensure that we bring the products in consistently and have consistent and regular business operations. The Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors is the representative advocacy lobby strategy, industry strategy body for uh, bulk distribution companies, uh, processing companies, um, storage companies, and these allied service um, entities. So, Senior, what's the core function of Seaboard? Our core task is to actually work with the, with the key policy and regulatory institutions to build mm -hmm. a very sustainable ecosystem for all these businesses to thrive. Mm -hmm. We are the platform for their dispute resolution. We are the platform for driving policy um, for e each party and also to offer proper representation and even market development for our members. So what, have, what has been the actual impact of price regulation on your members? As far as BDCs are concerned, the positive thing is that they don't have to go to government 
and, and, and be negotiating that. So those who fund BDCs have found a more predictable uh, regime to be yes. able to fund uh, imports mm -hmm. or bulk lifting from the refineries. So that's been good. The other thing, the bad side is the margins that is brought. You brought much, much lower to negative. In, fact, in yeah. a lot of cases, a lot of negative. You used to be a trade, a lot of negative trades. But like I said, that also creates a problem because we keep kicking the can and robbing Peter to pay Paul. The day the music stops, funding to the sector will significantly deplete and that will actually affect the sustainability of the entire industry. Completely. For us to be able to sustain the value we deliver to the economy. So to industry players, has this price regulation been beneficial to the players and has, is it sustainable? I'm, I'm not too sure from a player's perspective they will be so excited about, about it, depending on where they stand. But the alternative was worse, mm -hmm. all right? You can't have a situation where government's heavily indebted and can't pay. So that was not an option. But we think the players is rather injected highly uh, destructive competition, which is not sustainable for the industry. So if you look yeah. at industry viability and sustainability, you really have issues with it, but not with deregulation conceptually. It's more because of the way we have handled it. One of the challenges we had was with government um, wrongful inter interventions in the early days, thinking it was going to find a way to control, uh, control the price um, clandestinely. That actually caused a lot more people to get uncompetitive and led to the illegal trade booming, mm -hmm. right, to be able to survive. That hasn't helped. So with government even pulling back on that, We've now injected a new culture of, of, of illicit trading, mm -hmm. which is quite difficult to now kick out of the system, all right? And the uncompetitiveness also now leads to margins that are unsustainable for the yeah, investment. Minimal that margins. Made. Exactly. What's going to happen? You're going to get a lot more people not being able to post profits and pay corporate taxes at the end of the year. And the GRE has already shown that as far as the petroleum sector is concerned. Mm -hmm. You also have a situation where you're actually threatening the sustainability of all the employees and the viability of the entire businesses that are involved. And they start rubbing Peter to paper, which in, in technical terms, we'll call it teaming and lading. Because um, if I take from you and I undersell, I'll not be able to pay you back. Yeah. And if I'm not able to pay you back, I may have to take his money yeah, to way. pay you and keep doing that till the day that the music stops. That in itself creates an inherent financial risk and sustainability for us as a country. Did you miss an episode of Energy Quest? Watch all episodes on YouTube at Energy Quest TV or Kente TV. Also, catch up on the Daily Graphic YouTube page and website. Energy Quest, looking into the future. Let's go. Boss, if I show that you then it means you don't need to deduct money for my transportation. So first of all, you need to go there straight, then you take your left, you see where Jan Shino, you see Samto Energy Filling Station over there. Their four is very heavy, not lightly. And also it's available to buy in your car. And even if you buy like Andre Gara City, it can spark you the whole week. Do you understand? So Soto Energy is the best. But where Japan are you? Dabi, they have so many branches. Oh, find me GA branches. Me to man Brother, are you here to buy there your food? Do you want to be stuck here or you want a place to buy your food? I said, go to Soto Energy Filling Station. Where they have another branches at Taba Community 4. If you want more, I'll show that you. By this moment, I'm late. I need to go home. If I know I don't show people who are fair. Okay, first of all, animality. Me, Chomo, start off Philly Station. I should pay that you. Are you serious? You waste my time. Go to start off energy and buy your food and stop asking for lorry fair. Yeah, 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 no, they get by here. Informative, eh? We're just warming up. Now we'll take a detour. Two things. First, we'll look at a very innovative app. Then, we visit a trailblazing woman in the industry. I met this, my partner, Enoch Nketiah, 
where we decided to come up with this whole idea. Because of the experience that we had in the industry for quite some years, we realized that there were some gaps that we needed to fill for the consumers and oil marketing companies. Sometimes you have to travel and on your way, you don't have physical cash to buy fuel. You can be cash trapped. So we came up with the idea that why don't we come out with an app that will help make life more easier. We'll come up with an app and this app will serve as a payment platform where people will not have to use physical cash in terms of purchasing fuel. So we decided to come up with the Perfume app. As Jacob said, PFM Solutions came up as a result of we wanting to give a platform for oil consumers and oil marketing companies for them to have um, access to information, ready and easy access to information, convenience and value for money. The Fuel app is a digital payment platform where you can purchase fuel. You go to any fuel station, you don't need to pay with physical cash. All you need is that in the registration process, we design a four digital code for you. And this code serves as your wallet or your personal ID code, where when you get to any fuel stations across Ghana, we have about 4,000 outlets in Ghana, anywhere. And this app is a universal payment platform. It's actually a universal platform for all oil marketing companies anywhere. So though you are starting with Ghana. So you can be anywhere in the world and then give your code to um, your close one, your loved one, for the person to make purchase of fuel anywhere. And then all you have to do is just accept or decline the transaction. All you need to do is that you load your wallet, you give out the code to your drivers, and they can purchase fuel at any time, anywhere they find themselves. With the easy access to information, we realized that before you could get information on um, your fuel usage in a particular month, you either had to now call the oil marketing companies and for them to send you a mail or however they go about it. But with our platform, Perfume, you have the mobile app right in your palms. Wherever you buy the floor, at the time, location, you get all the notifications right on your palm. Now, this will help people who want to know the level of their fuel consumption in a month. Now, when it comes to convenience, it, it, it boils down to many aspects. The first one is being able to load your wallet at any time, any place. Now, with the current system, we found out that before you could load your wallet or your, your full card, which we have numerous on the market, you had to go to the company and now either write a check or you, know, you have to move from your, com your, your comfort zone to the next point of uh, where the oil marketing company's office is to make the purchase. But with perfume, all you have to do is just sit on your uh, sit in the house, you download your wallet um, through mobile money, credit card, Mastercard, any of the um, payment options uh, we have available. We cannot talk about technology without security. Our perfume app allows for limited errors, where we allow after a second attempt, we treat the transaction as a fraudulent transaction, and we quickly send a text message to the user or the subscriber of the app. We realized that people wanted to buy for from their favorite oil marketing companies, where, but not everybody knows where the location is, especially when it comes to experts who are in the country, and then, um, I mean, people in general. This uh, perfume platform has in an integration of a map, which leads you to the nearest floor station, and also gives you the, the, the distance as to how long you are or how far you are from the nearest phone station.
More and more women are chalking successes in the energy sector. One of such is the brilliant and illustrious Elena Mbogli. My day typically starts with emails and responding to WhatsApp messages from clients or my employees. Um, WhatsApp first, because usually by the time they send me a WhatsApp, it's urgent. So WhatsApp first and then email. So after 11, my emails are usually done and I do a walkabout. You know, I like to say hello to the staff, be interactive, find out if there's anything they didn't email me about, but it's still relevant. So I start an account. Uh, once I check with accounts, I go to HR, see if there's any issues, anybody that has a cup to work that is giving her headaches. And then once I step outside, I'm in the main yard. So this is where I deal with driver issues, vehicle issues. With over 400 trucks, you have to make sure you're keeping an eye on them. And the journey management department is the one that does that. They are the heart of the business, really. They monitor the trucks. They issue trips for the drivers and then they also make sure that when the drivers come back from their trips, they close out the trip and make sure everything went according to plan. This helps us to give our clients confidence that when you give us anything to do, we'll be able to deliver to all your best satisfaction. After I walk about the journey management department, I go to maintenance. Now, there's where I'm out of my league, but I'm managing because I have competent staff. Uh, it's purely technical. It is about truck, truck parts, truck maintenance, trucks, trucks, trucks. And I check on it, mainly when I get there, I check to make sure that they are following the safety rules and that the supervisors and the mechanics are working hand in hand to make sure that works are completed on time and in good quality. So once I'm done with that, I do, I've basically walked around the yard. Um, I see a few drivers, uh, they see a few of them say hi to me. A few of them take an opportunity to tell me all their problems. Um, and then I come back into the office, continue with emails, do my reports because I have to report to my boss at the end of the day. And then that should be it. My day typically ends around seven o'clock and then I'm done. So JK Hogley Transport and Company Limited is a family owned, African owned business that specializes in the transportation of petroleum goods across Ghana and the West African subregion. We transport wet products and dry products using petroleum tankers and also flatbed cargo trucks. Um, we've been in business for 40 years and counting. We're currently on the third generation and the business was started by our dear Madame Blanc of blessed memory. Um, yes, a woman started the business. Um, it's about 400 trucks and counting that we have going forward and we serve mainly between 11, 8 to 11 clients and a few other sports hire clients. Um, our main clients are one of the biggest OMCs in the country and we continue to serve them with excellent service, which is one of our biggest mottos over here. African excellence is possible and we want to make sure that we are proof that Africans can be excellent. Mostly my job is direction. I set vision and I make sure the vision is being implemented. So once the vision has been set, I'm the tracker, I'm the monitor. Um, I talk to clients, I talk to staff. I'm always looking out for how best I can utilize my staff. That's basically what I do, direct. I set the vision, I monitor it, and I make changes along the way. I'm a woman. Uh, my staff strength is about 557, last count, and only less than 20 of them are women. So you should understand that I'm dealing with mature men. Um, I'm young, I'm a woman. So I find that the it's dicey. You can't be the same with everybody. Some men respond when you're softer, and some respond when you're harsh. So it's a tricky situation finding out which is which. So you always have to try first when you're dealing with people. So my biggest challenge is people management. Apart from my challenges, my staff have to deal with a lot of clients' requests that change regularly. Um, in as much as our business is supposed to be fixed and you know what you're doing the next day, things change because the market changes and they have to react quickly. So thinking on their feet really quick in a very regulated environment is, is dicey for them that they have to deal with. When it comes to my drivers, we train them. We train them and train them and train them every year, every Monday, every last Sunday of the month. But when they get on the road, they are not on the road with themselves. They're on the road with other road users and sometimes road rage it's a real thing and so that's one of the biggest challenges my drivers have and also with delays when they have to go and deliver a product so those are most of our challenges this business was started by my grandmother 
she was a industrious seamstress. And then she made friends and her friends gave her connections with Texaco at the time. And she started by selling petroleum um, kerosene in gallons to her fellow market women in the village. So from selling gallons to market women in the village, she accumulated enough money, enough connections in the 1970s as an uneducated, according to our current educational system, uneducated woman to buy her first petroleum tanker. It was a 13,500 liters petroleum tanker that she bought. And my father, who was in GSS at the time, fell in love with petroleum and everything driving tankers. He was a mate to some of her drivers while he was growing up. And then once he finished his O-level, he said, Mommy, nah, I'm not going. I need to do this business. And he started. And he took that from one tanker. So she, by the time he started the business, she had about four tankers. Um, he took that, and today we have 400 tankers. Um, my staff strength is not equal. The gender is not equal. It's because the industry has traditionally been very male-dominated. Even in the offices, even in the boardrooms, is male-dominated. And as a company, we took a conscious decision in 2018 that we need to level that out. So if you go to our offices, any office here, there has to be a female presence. All the way from accounting, to stores and inventory, to engineering. Yes, we have female engineers on the field. And then in 2019, we started a project with the help of West African Training Academy and Scania to train female drivers for the company. It took us a year of training because they had already done some training with the Ayalolo program. And then once they were done with the training, we now have 12 very powerful female drivers. They can drive any truck from here to the north and back. Did you miss an episode of Energy Quest? Watch all episodes on YouTube at Energy Quest TV or Kente TV. Also catch up on the Daily Graphic YouTube page and website. Energy Quest, looking into the future. My enviable life is as a result of how informed I am in many spheres of life. Miro has always been my prime family newspaper for true and precise information with segments for all my family members. It's been the most popular weekly newspaper since 1953 and has accurate information for all. Its success has been embraced by all. My mom likes to read the Mirror newspaper and pays particular attention to the health columns, satires and oh, even at her age, she still reads the fashion column too. In a regular, my dad tries to get hold of my mom's copy of the Mirror newspaper because he finds accurate information on politics, tourism, law and other salient topical issues. And yes, that's my younger brother. He also pays attention to the Mirror team section, reads personality profiles to motivate himself, and once in a while goes through the recipe column to impress my mom. With Mirror, people are informed and lives are changed. Today, you can buy your favorite Mirror newspaper every Saturday with salient and accurate information. For more information, visit us on www.graphic.com.gh or contact our regional offices nationwide. Mirror, your family newspaper in style, prepared for every individual. Holland is an international financial group operating in over 18 countries across four different continents. Our specialty is in insurance, both long-term and short-term. Our presence in Ghana started in 2015 when we took over a very strong local brand called Metropolitan Insurance. And for the past five years, it's been good news all over. So what's Holland's specialty? So our speciality is in insurance, anything insurance. Insurance of lives, insurance of properties, insurance of assets, insurance of liabilities. So anything insurance, Hollard is into it. So you say big or small, you love it, we insure it. What business do you do with the oil and gas downstream sector? In the downstream, we provide solutions to almost everything that they do right from the people working in there to the properties acquired in there to the operations and activities that take place. So for instance, our life insurance business issues what we call group life assurance to cover the staff 
and people who were preaching there. And it happens. I mean, we've heard of stories where uh, in the middle of the night, people go there and attack the staff. Sometimes they take money, they cause injuries to them. So we have a life insurance product to take care of the staff there. And even when they attack them and take money, we have what we call money insurance. We actually insure money, whether they are on the attendance, they are on the counter, or they are in the safe. We also take care of any liability that they may face as a result of the operation. There are times we hear of explosions in some of these centers. Maybe members of the public who are just passing by, even customers who have come on site may, may in, in, in get some injury or sometimes they even die. That becomes a, a responsibility on the operator of the space to compensate them. So we have what we call public liability insurance that we issue to take care of all those activities. We insure everything, even to the oil that is underground that is being sold, the stock. So we took the average stock levels that they have. We insure them against flood. We insure them against fire. We insure them against earthquake. Almost every foreseeable risk. Once properly designed and well sold and well bought at the right levels and at the right, uh, if you like, values, once any such event happens, the insurance company sets in to pay the compensation to the third party on behalf of the operator. So it's actually an end-to-end -end solution to everything that happens in the downstream. So what impact has price regulation had on your business with the downstream oil and gas sector? I, I would say that the deregulation has done the sector a lot of good. Investors would want to operate per the, the, the market standards and the forces of, of the market. So what deregulation actually did was to open up the market for more participants, both local and international. So the base of that sector or that stream actually shot up. The, the more the people operating in that space, then the more our solutions will be sought after. Mm -hmm. So it has been good. The sector has expanded and our business too has expanded in that space. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, because we were already dealing with a lot of them, when the space was expanded, we had a lot of referrals coming from existing clients and it's all good news. I hope you enjoy the ride. This is what we do on Energy Quest. We demystify the energy sector. Until we meet again, ciao.